Sauce here. This is a video lesson on transforming sign. Transform means to change. And what we're going to change, what we're going to transform, is this equation y is equal to sine of theta. Theta is an angle. Sine is a function. It's a, one of the trigonometric ratios. And we put it in equation form so that the y-axis, the vertical axis, will be found by taking the sine of angles. To remind us what sine looks like and where it comes from, let's look at a graph. And in this graph, the horizontal axis is theta. The vertical axis is y that comes from taking the sine of theta. Theta is an angle. It is the angle as we rotate a point around a circle. Y is the height of that point as it travels around the circle, which is also found mathematically by taking the sine of the angle. So in this circle, I could imagine a point starting on the circle at zero height and it's going to travel around the circle in this direction. The angle is made as the point travels around as the angle between its starting position and then where it is on the circle, drawing radiuses from both of those points. So as the point travels, it starts at a height of zero and increases but it only increases up to its maximum height at one and then decreases to a half of a circle. We're gonna measure theta in radians. A radian from a previous lesson is the amount of opening that you get when you go one radius around the circle. So if the point travels the same distance as one radius, then the angle measure that was opened is defined as one radian. When we get halfway around the circle, the amount of radians that that semicircle angle makes is pi radians because there's exactly pi number of radius lengths that make up a half of a circle. So the point will go up and come back down back to zero once it gets pi radians around the circle. The point, again, starts at a height of zero, goes up to one, and halfway around the circle comes back down to a height of zero. And then, as the point travels around the second half of the circle, it goes below into the negatives and reaches negative one, its minimum, before coming back up to zero again to complete a circle. A complete circle in radians is 2 pi. So my horizontal axis is labeled with angle measures in radians. The point travels up to 1, height of 1, back down to 0 to half circle, down to negative 1, 3 quarters of the way around, and then back up to 2 pi. To complete at 2 pi, it comes back up to 0. And the curve that connects these points is called a sinusoidal curve. This is the graph of sine. We're going to transform the equation, and the ways in which we transform the equation will then affect the graph and transform the graph. So let's remind us how or what different ways we can transform any function. One of the simplest transformations is to move right. If we move right, imagine this entire sinusoidal wave moving to the right by a certain amount. Since we labeled our horizontal axis in radian measures, then we're going to go right by a certain amount of radians. In this case, if we go right by pi over 2, pi over 2 is a half of pi. I could label one of the tick marks at pi over 2 then the amount that we're going to move to the right is that amount there, π 
pi over 2. What we do to the equation to accomplish that is just as the same as transforming any function because sine is a function. It's counterintuitive. We're going to affect the horizontal axis. In this case, we're going to do something to theta. And a rightward motion or slide is accomplished by subtraction. It's counterintuitive because if we want if we think of moving in the positive direction, we need to subtract. Now this equation, the transformed equation, is going to be the equation for the sinusoidal wave that's been moved. I have a piece of clear plastic. If I trace the sinusoidal wave onto the clear plastic, I can see the movement that I would accomplish. I'm going to go pi over 2 to the right. That means every single point has been moved to the right. The intercepts and the maximum and minimum have all shifted. Okay, let's do some more transformations. We can also go left. If we wanted to go left by pi, we would affect the horizontal variable, theta, and to go left, we add Going left by pi looks like this. A pi distance horizontally is that much. And if we move left pi, we shift the entire sinusoidal wave over. It still has a maximum and a minimum of 1 and negative 1, but where they are located horizontally has been changed we can move or transform by moving up, but in this case we're going to move up by integer amounts. If we go up one, then it's a vertical change. We go up by subtracting from the vertical variable. Y minus one is shifting the entire function up. We are used to solving equations for Y, so I'm going to give that version. Algebraically, if I add one to both sides, I'll get y by itself so that it is in this familiar form. These two equations are equivalent. One shows the transformation with the variable that it affects. The other is solved for y, which is typical for graphing. And the effect that it has on the wave, of course, is to move up by one, which would go off my paper at the top, entire wave going up by one. down by a certain amount means that I'm going to modify the vertical variable. Down, we add to the vertical variable. In this case, to go down by 2, we add 2 to y. There's the transformed equation, and solve for y, it looks like y is equal to sine theta minus 2. A downward motion by 2 would mean, of course, take every single point. And I'm going to track this one because this point, the maximum, is at 1. So if I think of the maximum going down by 2, it's going to go down to 0 and then negative 1. Every other point would shift the same way. A few more transformations. Let's remind us how to reflect. We can reflect over either axis. Reflecting over y means that we're going to make the horizontal variable negative. And a reflection over y, if y is the vertical axis, we take the wave and it's like folding across this line, the reflection over y would look like this. Let's reflect over the horizontal variable or axis. Reflect over theta means to make y negative. Counterintuitive. You make the other variable negative to reflect over that axis. And solving for y means getting it positive. We multiply both sides by negative 1. These equations are equivalent and reflecting over the theta axis by making y negative would end up looking like 
this. Two more. Vertical compression. And by a factor of three. Affects the equation. It's going to affect the vertical variable. The counterintuitive step is that if we are going to compress, that means to shorten vertical distances, we're going to multiply in order to accomplish that. So the equation becomes the vertical variable times 3 means that it's going to shrink distances. Dist vertical distances are going to be a third of what they were, compressing by a factor of 3. And that means that the wave can't do this because it's going to distort. Every vertical distance is going to be about a third. So the, well, exactly a third, but the vertical distance of one is then going to be about there at one third. And the vertical distance of negative one is going to be compressed to be negative a third and all other distances, the wave is going to stay the same shape, but its maximums and minimums are going to guide us to draw the curves best we can. Vertical compression factor three. And we can expand or stretch vertical stretch by a factor of two means that we're going to elongate vertical distances. Counterintuitively, that means that we're going to divide by the stretch factor. So the vertical variable y, in order to expand it and stretch it, we need to divide by the stretch factor of 2, which gets this equation. y divided by 2 means that vertical distances are going to double. I could choose some guide points. One is off my paper. A vertical distance of zero isn't going to change, but the wave will go up. Come back down to its zero. The minimum at negative one has been stretched to become at negative two, and back up. These compressions and stretches are dilations, and of course we can stretch and compress horizontally as well. But since that affects an important quality of the sinusoidal wave that we're going to call its period, we're going to leave that for a future lesson.